it's an exciting time for you because you're considering starting a brick and mortar store. Even though we've heard a lot about retail business and consumer goods going to online type models, people still love to shop in person. They love to be in the store. They love to be in that environment, talking to people. You're about to start your first brick and mortar and you're considering the steps that you have to take before you open your doors for that first time. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about five steps that you should consider before your grand opening. Hey guys, I'm Mike, and if you like my YouTube videos, if you find them helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that little notification bell so that you're notified of any future videos that I release. I really appreciate your support. If you have any questions about anything I talk about, put it down below in the comments. I respond to each and every one of them. You're starting a retail store. You're excited, but you don't want to rush into it. Just like any business, you want to make sure you take your time, make sure that all the steps are in place, make sure that you build that foundation so that when you're ready to roll and you're ready to get into business, you don't have to look back and say, oh, I wish I would have done this, or you know, this foundation isn't strong enough. I'm not doing as well as I should have because I didn't plan properly. And like any business, planning is essential. So let's get into number one right away, location and niche. This is really important, of course, when you're in the retail business or when you're starting a store, you wanna make sure that based on your niche or whatever niche you're gonna go into, which I think you should consider, niche businesses tend to do better than businesses that are kind of generalist. When you're considering your niche, where's a great location for you to be where you're gonna get the appropriate foot traffic? Are you gonna draw the demographic that you wanna draw to that location? And here's some things to think about when you're considering where you wanna open the store. Number one is who lives there? Is it your ideal target? Is it the clients that you want to meet or agree or sell to? If you're selling beachy type apparel or apparel for young people, do you want to be in neighborhoods that attract and have more younger people? How about high end? If you're going to sell high end products or high end inventory, high end apparel, you want to be in an area that has more high end people, people that have a higher incomes. So that's an important thing to think about. Number two, who will be walking in the door? Is it the clients that you want to sell to? Or is it the people that want to buy your product that you're selling in your store? What's the average foot traffic in the area. There's definitely ways you can look that up. There's all types of reports. If you're working with a commercial real estate agent or, or a lease representative, tenant lease representative, ask them, you know, ask them for the information in the area about foot traffic, about uh, target market, about what your sales could be. Who are the competitors there? You know, of course you want to make sure that if you're going into an area and you have a particular niche that you don't have too many competitors that would saturate that particular market for what you're trying to sell. Is the location easily accessed? And a really important thing to consider is, is there parking? I know personally, Personally, when I go to stores, you know, I hate dealing with parking. I just can't stand it. I prefer to go to places where I know there's going to be parking, whether that's a mall or an area that has big open parking spaces or, you know, areas that, you know, have parking uh, garages or things like that nature. So consider all of that before you rush into the area where you're going to open your stores. The last thing to consider is, and I talked about tenant representation, but negotiate your lease terms. Don't just settle for whatever the landlord or the property management company is asking for. Negotiate the terms to get to the level of the lease that you've budgeted for. Make sure you stay in your budget so that you know that your profits are going to be where you need them to be. Number two is the marketing. Of course, now you're opening your store. How are you going to get people to come in? Aim for consistent marketing. What I mean by consistent is, is your brick and mortar location on brand with your website, your business cards, your social media profiles, etc. Consistency and recognition should be your focus so that you become recognizable to people that you want to sell to. Even if you have a brick and mortar, make sure you start your Google business profile. Google business profiles are really, really a great resource where you can put the address where people can ask for direction. Do they have a direct link to your reviews, a direct link to your website? There's even options now that you can have live chat if customers are interested in asking questions. You can have FAQs, direct links to your site, all types of cool things from your Google business profile that you want to make sure that you start up. Take pictures of your location, take pictures of your stores, your products. Update it regularly because as you know, Google gets most of the traffic. That's why they're Google. Use that free tool and keep it on brand. Place your address in your social media profiles. Okay, put it in your Instagram profile. Profile, put it in your Facebook profile, put it on your TikTok profile. You want to make it easy for people to access your location. If you don't give them easy access, how do you expect them to get there? If you want people to post images on social media, check into your store, tag your store, share their experience online, think about in-store events. Think about displays that could be interesting. Think about art. Think about interactive stations in the store. Things that will prompt people to share. That's free advertising. It's a great way to get your name out there and to get your store out there. The next thing I want to talk about is accounting. I feel like accounting 
accounting is often overlooked or rushed when businesses are starting up, but it's a big, big mistake. We talk to a lot of startup business owners. I talked about niches for you before. One of our niches is startup new businesses. I always talk to them about their accounting practices. Set up bookkeeping software to begin. If you think you're gonna need help from a bookkeeper, find an outsourced bookkeeper. You might not have right away the cash flow or the profitability or the resources to hire someone full time, but you can hire someone maybe five, 10 hours a week, keeping up with your bank reconciliation, your income, your expenses, so that you know at any given time, you can take a look and say, okay, this is how we're doing. This is how our sales are doing. This is how our expenses are. This is our net profit. Keep it updated. Don't get behind because once you get behind, now you don't know where your business is headed and you don't know how your business is performing. You have nowhere to look. So make sure you keep that up to date, whether it's an online bookkeeping software or an outsourced bookkeeper. Get a business banking account. Don't intermingle it with your personal account because then it's hard to pull things out and get things right and understand really how your business is doing versus you personally. To open a business account, you're gonna have to have an FEIN, which you can get from the IRS when you file your entity. Another big thing of importance or another really important step is your point of sale system. So your customers can exchange payments for goods and you can keep track of where your sales tax becomes payable. Now, me personally, when I go to stores now, I want it to be a point of sale system that's really, really easy to use. Whether it's I can use Apple Pay, you know, just scan it with my phone. I don't even have to have my wallet, take my wallet out, take my credit card. Or there's an app where the person at the store can scan the app and it, you know, withdraws the funds or whatever balance I have from that particular retailer's app. But whatever it is, try to make it easy, as easy as possible. The easier it is that people can pay, the easier it's gonna be for you to earn business. And then finally, consider a CPA. A good CPA is worth their weight in gold. If you need a referral for a great CPA, I have them. A CPA is gonna help you. They're gonna help you prepare. They're gonna help you stay on track with your tax payments, whether that's your income tax payments or your sales tax, whatever it may be. So get a great CPA, make sure you build a good relationship with the CPA. Now, the fourth thing we're gonna talk about, it's the in-store experience. Make it memorable, that's what they said. Why did you choose to set up a store instead of being a virtual business? Well, because you want people to come in. You want people to feel a certain way when they come into your store. You want people to react a certain way. You want people to experience a certain experience that they can't get online, right? That they can't get elsewhere, that they can't get from your competition. The in-store experience is gonna be crucial and you need to ask yourself, how do you want people to feel? How will you and your staff communicate with the customers? Some of my favorite retailers, their brand to me, when I think about them, is the way that their team and their, their staff communicates with me. It's very consistent, it's very defined. You, uh, you, you can expect a certain way or a certain form of communication uh, when you go into their stores. So make sure your messaging and your tone is consistent. Make sure that you train people to the right levels, that they understand how you expect them to interact and the level of service that you expect that they provide. So that's all really important when you're setting up the in-store experience. And then fifth, but probably the, not the most fun, plan for your insurance. There's a cost associated and you need to include it in your budget. And if you're doing pro formas and you have financials that you want to stick to, your insurance is a big part of that. So what are some common types? Well, one is a business owner policy. Most brick and mortar stores can qualify for a business business owner policy, which is the most preferred form package policy that includes liability, which will cover, you know, your premise in case people get hurt or claim that they slipped and fell in your store. Any product exposure you may have, you know, if people get injured or hurt by the product that you're selling them. Property coverage, which will cover your inventory, your furnishings, your computers, your systems, anything in the store. On bot policies, you can get some EPLI, not full version EPLI, which stands for Employment Practices Liability Insurance, which covers a business for employee related lawsuits or issues issues such as discrimination, harassment, wrongful termination. The list goes on and on, but a BOP is the most preferred and most brick and mortars can qualify. If not a BOP, a commercial package, which once again, packages your liability, your property, but it doesn't have all the extensions or all the endorsements, and it's more put together by the producer or the broker or the insurance company than a BOP. A BOP is more standard, something that's more formulated that comes the way it does, kind of out of the box type thing. Think about it that way. Workers' compensation, if you hire employees, even if, if it's in California, if it's one even part-time, person, you must purchase work comp. It's statutory. It's law. Make sure you factor in your workers' compensation costs. Business automobile. Are you doing deliveries? Do you have a business auto in the name of the business? That's something that you're going to want to look into. I said it before, cyber liability. If you're selling online or even if you're in the store and you have POS systems that store people's payment information, stores people's private information, even your employee information. You can get cyber insurance on a first party and a third party basis. But if you're subject to a ransomware attack and you can't get into your systems or your files, 
files. That's all stuff that you should consider. Employment practices, liability insurance is a big one in the retail space. That's something you might want to consider. Think about these things before you start to get into the business, before you launch the business. You know, make sure you plan, make sure you budget, you know, put together a SWOT analysis where you understand your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this is all stuff that I can help you with, that we could help you with here if you're interested in speaking to us about it. And of course, when it comes to the insurance side of things, consider hiring a really great independent insurance agency, maybe one that's local to your business or one that you have a relationship with or an agency like us where we can work with businesses in 25 states. Give us a call if you have any questions about any of the info that I gave you today. My, our direct dial here at the office is area code 858-384-1506. You can email hello at foagency.com and we respond to all inquiries. Also on our website, foagency.com, there's a live chat feature that people love to use. Feel free to reach out there or any other way that you'd like to communicate social media here on our YouTube channel. However, it works best for you. Good luck with your planning. Good luck with your new brick and mortar. Thank you for watching our video. Take care.